This week on Library Beat's True Crime Spectacular, Karen and I attend the library's first ever true crime book club and chat with some of the participants. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Excellent. Well, so. you're, you might be on, on a podcast after this. <laughs> it will not be a true crime podcast unless something goes horribly wrong today. We also count down our top five true crime book picks, play the true crime edition of our weekly trivia game, and quiz some of our co-workers about their true crime favorites, and in one case, a least favorite, a book too horrifying to even shelve. But there was one book that I always tried to avoid shelving because it just scared me so badly, and the name of the book is... Stay tuned for Tiffany's book. But now, we're going back to the Gordon L. Williams Hall, where Karen and I are preparing for the first ever Hot Springs Cold Blood true crime book club while we're putting out chairs and waiting for our guests to arrive karen and i have to refresh our memories on the book in cold blood we swear we really did read it let's see what we can find and uh nancy was was helping to make a a cherry pie yes and they were going to go to sunday school well she was going to go to the to the 4-h to the 4-h but she had to make that cherry pie instead I wonder whatever happened to the siblings that weren't there. Because, you know, there weren't there the, two the, older. The two sisters, well, they inherited that farm. Well, who wants that And it was farm? supposed to be pretty valuable, actually. Yeah, but, I mean, I guess they're probably dead by now. Yeah. As of 2017, they were not dead, but we didn't know that. Uh, we don't want to spoil the story for anyone who hasn't read it. As our true crime book clubbers started settling into the auditorium, I asked a few of them if they wouldn't mind talking to the podcast. Maybe you could tell us your, your name. Linda Fisher. Linda Fisher, and what made you sign up for True Crime Book Club? Well, I guess that there's so much crime and everything today. Maybe, I don't know, I just want to know more about it and be aware more, probably, is something that would be for my own safety. Right. Have you ever been in any other book clubs? No. No? Your very first book club? Yes. Did you read in, In Cold Blood? No, I didn't. I have read about it. I have read about the author, and mm-hmm. I, I plan to read it after right. today. So are you looking forward to the uh, discussion? Yes, very much so. Okay, very good. Well, thank you for chatting with us. Is there anything else you'd like to say? I enjoy Hot Springs and all the opportunities that they have here, and I feel lucky that there are programs like this. All right. Well, Linda, thank you very much. All right. And what what is your name, ma'am? Amy Finley. Amy Finley. And um, what made you want to sign up for our True Crime Book Club? Uh, I've always been interested in true crime, even back in the 80s when it was a big hit then. Mm-hmm. So I uh, listened to a lot of podcasts. Excellent. Well, so. you're, you might be on, on a podcast after this. <laughs> it will not be a true crime podcast unless something goes horribly wrong today. Um, did uh, did you read the the In Cold Blood? I actually listened to it on audio. That's what I did too. Yeah. yeah. Did you did did you enjoy it? Yeah, I had actually read it years and years ago, mm-hmm. so it was good to go back and re-listen to it. Excellent. Yeah. Um, what what other types <coughs> of true true crime things are, are you interested in? All. All like <laughs> podcasts. I do the podcast. Are, are there any particular podcasts that you like? Uh, Helen Gone, mm-hmm. uh, Real Life Re- Crime with Woody Overton. Uh, Murder and Mimosas. Oh. Murder and Mimosas. Murder and Mimosas? Yeah. Okay. All right, and what is your name, sir? Uh, Bill Smith. Bill Smith. What, what made you sign up for our True Crime Book Club today? The fact is that uh, I grew up in Kansas at the time of the killing. I moved back to Kansas in 58, and that was the main topic. It was in 1959 that it happened, right? Right. Yeah. Were you close to that, that, that part of Kansas? I, no, not Well, we were right north of Wichita, but my dad was involved in agriculture and knew the clutters. Yeah, apparently her, her clutter was kind of a bigwig in the agricultural circle. Yes, he, um, my dad was in the, we had uh, called Kansas Landing Cattle, mm-hmm. and uh, we raised beef, yeah. but uh, it's a small uh, fraternity of uh, agriculturalists back then in the 50s in Kansas. Mm-hmm. They were, uh, are, are you a, a book club person? Do you, do you no, I normally clubs? don't do this. I was just We just joined the library mm-hmm. and I saw this 
when I was getting my library card right. that th this book was going to be discussed. Okay. And, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad you signed up. And I've got to tell you that uh, a man in a book club is a rare thing. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for, for chatting. I appreciate it. Please tell me your name. It's Michelle Cabral. Michelle Cabral. And I believe you are from Massachusetts. Is I that am. Correct? That's correct. What, what brought you to Hot Springs? Uh, um, location, weather. Mm -hmm. Well, did you enjoy the weather this last week? Uh, I was in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> So I missed all of that, Excellent. but my hu husband really was here. Wasn't. You are in our other book club, too, have book, will travel, so mm -hmm. would you consider yourself a book club person? So believe it or not, these are my very first book clubs. Oh, excellent. So I you made it. like an old pro. I like to read, yeah. but I've never been part of a book club, so mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to read a book and then be able to discuss it. All right. What, what made you want to sign up for the True Crime Book Club? I've always been kind of interested in true crime, um, especially growing up in Massachusetts. I was very involved with the Lizzie Borden. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's um, a good one. That's we, a really we, good one. We, we might be, need to do that. We could do that one. Yeah, and yeah. how about the uh, uh, Boston Strangler? Yes, Ooh. that one too. <laughs> yep, the Boston Strangler. Yeah. What What did you think of of In Cold Blood? Um, so I've read it. I read it before in college. Um, so reading it again really, um, just. Yeah, just the, the psychological part of, you know, mm -hmm. um, these two men just, I mean, for $40, murdered this family. Mm -hmm. Over $40, I mean, yeah. just sad. It's, 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 it's very sad. So we won't get into it. Well, thank mm -hmm. you very much for, for sure. uh, chatting. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> what followed was a lively discussion of In Cold Blood, some true crime podcasts, and local cold cases. Thanks to everyone who came and made it so fun. We had our first ever True Crime Book Club last Saturday. How do you think it went, Karen? It went fabulous. We talked about In Cold Blood, which is why our book club is named that. Hot Springs Cold Blood, in tribute to In Cold Blood, one of the first true crime books um, that got popular. That I, yeah, maybe not. Seller. Yeah, maybe not the first true crime book, but certainly one of the best. So True Crime Book Club is going to meet when? It meets every other month, uh, the first Saturday of the month. And our next one will be April 1st uh, at 12 o'clock here at the library. And you can sign up online or come in and sign up. Right, at, at gclibrary.com. We uh, usually buy books for people for these clubs. We buy about 10 copies, and once those are gone... It's first come, first serve, and we've given out the 10 copies, but this book is available probably to check out from the library yes. also as an e-book and as an e-audio book, yes, and uh, we're hoping that some of the people who uh, got the book um, at our last meeting, maybe they'll finish it early and they'll bring, bring it back and we can give, exactly. give some more out to people, but we do have room for people to sign up just if you want to come listen and, and talk. Um, we sort of stuck to the book on, in cold blood on Saturday, but part of the plan was to veer off topic. So how do you think it went? I think it went well. People talked about different, uh, unsolved crimes here in hot springs and different things, um, that's going on around the world, true crime wise. Right. And, uh, some, uh, uh, podcasts were mentioned too. Yes. Not this one. No. <laughs> But Helen Gone, one of our favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, Your Own Backyard, one of my favorites, if you haven't uh, listened to that. And one Greg turned me on to is The Dating Game Killer. That's not for kids, but The Dating Game Killer is a great podcast as well. Right. There are so, so many good true crime podcasts that uh, we've actually started keeping a spreadsheet so we can keep, keep track of which ones we listen to and which ones are good and which ones are, are bad. Today, we're going to specifically talk about some of our favorite true crime books. So we are super excited to share some of our lists that, that we've been coming up with. Uh, we're each going to name at least about five, and I think we're going to go one at a time and see what's... We haven't seen what's on yes. each other's list yet, no. although we've talked about this a lot, so it's probably <laughs> some of the same Best books. Years, yeah. So, Karen, what is your number five pick? Number five pick was Ultimate Evil. It discusses the Son of Sam case. And there was a documentary on the author, Maury Terry. Um, I don't know if it was Netflix or Amazon, mm -hmm. something. And it was it's pretty interesting, but it's called Ultimate Evil. That does sound like a very good one. Uh, Son of Sam is a fascinating case. He's one of my favorites. Yes. 
Uh, number five on my list, and I'm not sure that these are necessarily in, in order, but I, I did jot them down. I put one called The Invention of Murder by Judith Flanders. Uh, she's a, a historian mainly who writes about the Victorian era. And in this book, she talks about all the famous uh, Victorian crimes in England and how they went from being sort of rare instances into becoming mass entertainment, how they b got turned into you know, plays and songs and all sorts of things, kind of leading up to today where there's sort of a mass entertainment complex around these uh, yeah, stories. Around time, yes. But you know, if you're interested in Jack the Ripper or any of those old, old-timey crimes, it's a fascinating book. What is your next one? Uh, I like Small Sacrifices by Anne Rule. It came out maybe early 80s. I'm not real sure, but it is fascinating. And they actually did a, I think, made-for-TV movie with a famous Vera Fawcett. But it's about a mother who doesn't want her children anymore, and she harms them. And it's fascinating to delve into her psyche and what happens with the children. So I vote for Small, small Sacrifices. All right. Small Sacrifices was not on my list, but I second the recommendation. I've, I've read it to Karen turned me on to it a, a, a few years ago. And it's not an easy read because you're reading about some pretty gruesome uh, things. But that's what happens in m most of these books. So you have to just get get through it. Yes. yes. Um, I have an end rule book on my on my list too. What is your end rule? My end rule book is uh, The Stranger Beside Me. Oh, famous one. Yes, because yes. uh, she actually knew Ted Bundy in the early 1970s. They both worked at a suicide hotline center together. Oh, and she <laughs> she was a little bit older than he was, but they became friends. And you know, at the time, she didn't know what he was doing in his off time. Uh, she found out later and wrote a book about uh, Bundy's notorious serial killing career. But it's a, uh, I think we can agree that Anne, Anne, Anne Rule, most of her books are, are, are excellent. Yes. Yeah. What, what do you think it is about Anne Rule's books that makes them uh, special? I don't know if it's the way she writes or the, just the in-detailed research she did. And, of course, she knew Ted Bundy. Mm -hmm. And that got an honorable mention on my, my list. Um, but I think just the way she writes in the, in the in-depth research that she did, Anne Rule was the queen. Yes. She was a, an, an excellent writer. Um, there have been tons of true crime books that are just sort of hack jobs. Uh, cheesy. Cheesy. Kind of getting the, the information from AP or some news source mm -hmm. online or, or whatever. But Anne Rule really went in there and researched and dug deep into these things and what made that person tick. So I think that's what sets her apart from some right. of these books. Yeah, definitely. And I think we're at number three. So yes. it's your... My turn. I like the book Zodiac by Graysmith. I think it's Robert Graysmith. And, of course, that crime has never been solved, and that's kind of a spooky crime, somebody mm -hmm. walking up on you in a hood and, and, and things. So um, I really like Zodiac because it mentions who it might be, but, of course, that's never been solved, and it mentions the, the cipher. Mm -hmm. So And it's a pretty thick book. It's hard to get into, and some, there's so much detail in it, but I vote Zodiac. Can I tell a little personal story? Yes. <laughs> when I was a little kid, my uh, parents were divorced. My dad lived in California, and my mom lived here in Arkansas. I'd go visit my dad in the summers, and uh, he enjoyed scaring the bejesus out of me, which I don't know if that's good parenting or not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. it was the 70s. I, it was the <laughs> 70s. I'm not saying anything against him, but somehow I got a hold of the Zodiac story, and, of course, it terrified me. I was probably, you know, seven years old. And um, one, one time, uh, since I was only there for the summer, I was sleeping on like a fold-out sofa bed. And one night I had gone to bed, and out from under the bed comes my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and he says that he's the Zodiac. But we really don't think it was uh, Mr. Wallace. No, I don't, I don't really <laughs> think he was the Zodiac. But mm. now, now, now I'm kind of wondering. Yeah. All right. So is it my turn? Yes. Okay. I like the, uh, some of these uh, true crime books that are about like big business, like when big business goes wrong, yes. uh, the smartest guys in the room about the Enron. Uh, yes, that yes. is a fascinating read. I wish I'd have thought of that one. 
That's great and bad blood about the, the lady blood person. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth Holmes, who has yes. been in the news yes. lately. Yes, both um, both of those are, are, are excellent. Oh, yeah. Enron is very good. Yes. There are actually two books about Enron. There was another one by Kurt Eichenwald, who is a very good writer, too. But it's very good business. If you're interested in that, it just makes you so angry, some of those things. Uh, but it's a very well-written book, yes. great book. All right, and I believe it's your turn. Oh, it is my turn. Okay, the next one is In Cold Blood, which we just discussed on Saturday by Truman Capote. Um, uh, kind of a scary story about home invasion and, and murder and the first you know, real big true crime book. But again, it's well-written. Lots and lots and lots of research went into this. So it's my number two pick. I think that's an excellent choice. Everyone at the book club really enjoyed it. A lot of them were probably rereading it. It's one of those books you can read over and over again because there is so much detail. Yes. You really feel like you get to know these people. Some of them you wouldn't want to get to know. Right. But uh, I really liked one that came out a couple of years ago called The Lazarus Files. Um, it was about, it took place in Los Angeles in the 1980s. And uh, this nurse yes. gets killed. She's uh, newly married. Mm-hmm. And she and her husband live in this nice condo. They're just starting their lives together. And uh, the wife gets killed in the apartment. And it looks like a robbery gone wrong. Uh, Turns out years later, like 25 years later, they uh, ran the DNA evidence that, that they had stored. And the perpetrator, this is a spoiler alert, is an, an, an LAPD cop, a woman detective named Lazarus. But sort of how she evaded detection for all those years and the political shenanigans going on at the LAPD, it was really a, a fascinating case. Yes. It's a great podcast, too. I heard it somewhere. But, yeah, podcast is a great podcast. Karen, I believe we're down to our number one picks. My number one pick for true crime is Helter Skelter. Uh, again, a very in detailed book, very, very in detailed book. It takes a long time to read to get to know everybody, all the family in there. Um, but if you know about the, the murders, Charles Manson and stuff, excellent read. Don't read it at night by yourself, but it's an excellent read, Helter Skelter. It's so excellent that it was my number one pick, too. So. Yes. Helter Skelter is yes. is the winner. And Vince Bugliosi. Yes, did an excellent job on all that research, and he wrote some more uh, true crime books as well. Mm-hmm. But that's that's the top pick for me. All right, we have made it through our top five true crime books. We didn't have any major arguments, and in fact, we agreed on the number one pick. Yes. Next, Karen and I quiz some of our coworkers about their true crime picks. In season three of The Counterclock, they cover the prom night killer, but I didn't get into Counterclock till I started listening to, until I started listening to, um, oh, what was it called? Crime, Crime Junkies. Crime Junkies. And Ashley Flowers was talking about um, that case. So she went over that entire case, and then she said, but there's more. And so then I listened to the other podcast. Um, and that's, which was Counterclock, and that's where I heard the whole story of the prom night killer. And that was pretty intense. You said season three? Yep, season three. And season one, um, I just recently just went back to season one because I liked season three so much. I was like, well, let me listen to season one. And that one talks about Jessica Davis. I see, I'm not getting all that. I'm... Counterclock. Let me see. Mm-hmm. So lady in South Carolina, is, yeah. is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. See, there's Counterclock. And, and Denise Johnson. Is that what I said? I said Jessica Davis, whoever that is. Yeah, sorry, Denise Jessica Johnson. Davis, yeah, no offense. You're still with us. <laughs> yes, Denise Johnson. Yes, I tried okay. to, I started that one. So this is what mine looks like. So whenever I go to what, this. What podcast provider do you use? Spotify. Spotify. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I don't know how to do Spotify's. And I, ha- I don't know if Spotify Premium will limit... Like, I have the premium because I'm really Ooh. fancy, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> savage over here. <laughs> but I don't know if that'll limit you on there or not. But is season three the Pelly family? Yeah, the Pelly family. They kind of, they don't separate them. They're kind of all in one big row, one giant list, but then, like, once it finishes one season, it just goes on 
to the next season. It's all in one spot, which is a little confusing. But I mean, that's the Spotify's. Mm -hmm. I get frustrated with the ones who they sort them by the new episodes because I want to yes. start at the beginning yes. and work my way through. What do you listen to your podcast on? Different ones, and that's what gets yeah. me in trouble because I can't remember which one. Like I've got some uh -huh. on Amazon Music I'm listening to, some on yeah. Audible, and some on Spotify, and some on Google Podcasts. I don't know if you can change it on any of the other ones, but on Spotify you can sort your podcasts to oldest to newest. Right. So I do that a lot because yeah. I want to listen in pay, order. Do you pay for your Spotify premium? Unfortunately, yes, I okay. do. Do you pay for Spotify? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't either. I don't pay for anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm at season one, The Murder of Denise Johnson, mm -hmm. not Jessica Davis. We're yes. sorry about sorry. that, Jessica. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to try it. Um, I started season one yesterday. And I went, this is not about proms. So I really want to hear that one. Yes, but it's not about prom night and dancing. They just call him the prom night killer, which is really misleading. Oh. <laughs> but they they call Nothing him under the sea. I know they call him that just because they accused him of the murders, and he's the one that went to prom that night. So they call him the prom oh, night killer. Okay. Oh. oh, it still sounds interesting. I'm gonna try that. Yes. I hope I didn't spoil anything. No, no, no. But back to. Crime Junkie, mm -hmm. Ashley Flowers wrote a book called All Good People Here, and mm -hmm. I was on the wait list for that here at the library, and I was like, I don't want to wait for this. So I got it on Libby or Hoopla mm -hmm. and listened to it on there. Yeah. It was really good. What but is it's not. So it's about this, um, she's a journalist, and she I think she's kind of an investigative is journalist. Is it a true, person, true story? No. It's a novel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, it's not true crime, but it's written by a true crime yeah. podcaster. A true crime so. junkie. Yeah. Yes. So it was really good. It was about, so she's an investigative journalist, kind of like Delia D'Ambra, who does that podcast. Mm -hmm. She goes back to her hometown and learns about um, some murders, and she goes into her past about her childhood friend that was murdered, and she starts investigating it years later, and she uncovers some crazy things. Well, that's kind of like Snake Eyes. Kind of like Snake Eyes. I haven't read Snake Eyes, but maybe I should. Aubrey, why don't you introduce yourself okay. to, to our listeners? Yes, hi, I'm Aubrey, and I work here at the library with Greg. We're pals, and Karen, her too. <laughs> 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 um, but I'm the adult services coordinator here, and I do a lot of fun stuff. So you do a lot of fun stuff. We're planning uh, one of our episodes. We're going to come to Crafternoon, and hopefully there will not be a true crime at Crafternoon. Well, oh, that would be fun. Would be. It would be kind of like a, well, never mind. But it'd be scary. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we chatted with Tiffany Howe, who is our Youth Services Director and also a member of the Hot Springs Cold Blood True Crime Festival Committee. My least favorite book. True Crime book. Let me, let me, let me get the author's name for you. Oh, you showed us the mantra. Yes, and it's horrifying. Yeah. So when I was a, many, many years ago, when I was a shelver at the Denver Public Library, I would have to shelf all the books because it was a little small branch. And um, so I would shelved, of course, in true crime. But there was one book that I always tried to avoid shelving because it just scared me so badly. And the name of the book is The Mad Chopper. And there was this, I don't even know the full details of the book, or I assume that the murders were done with an ax, um, but the cover was just terrifying. I'm going to show you, hang tight, I want to show you a picture of this, the Mad Chopper. I know if we're doing this as a podcast, the wonderful, all the, the millions of listeners can't actually see but it might be something worth looking up if you want a good scare oh god there it is okay so the name of the book Matt Chopper by Kent Allard and look it's this like old old pockmarked farmer guy well, it says 25% off. no hang on no. <laughs> shut up you guys look look how awful he is oh, oh, look at oh, that oh, isn't it horrible <laughs> That is the scariest thing, and I just couldn't even look at the book. There's never been another book like that, even books like with black widows on them or other scary things. I can I can shelve those, but that Not one. Not the No, I and I just can't even really. The story. I can't even really oh. think about the cover. Yes, he um, he chopped a girl's arms off after he uh, raped her. Mm. And he only spent eight years in prison. 
Eight years is, that's not long enough. No, it's not. And as it said, as punishment did, you know, the public were just, you know, outraged at, at that short sentence. I'm outraged at his face also, which is yeah. on the cover of he, the book. It is not a happy-go-lucky face. It's, no, it's, it's worn terrifying. and torn. Yes, it's terrifying. Yeah. Okay, well, but that, we, is a, that is a kind of a famous story, I guess, probably on that side of the United States. Yeah, what, where was it? In, in the Midwest somewhere? Yeah, in, in the 70s, I think. 1978. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we've established that you have been traumatized by the Mad Chopper. Yes. Which is totally understandable. Yes. Is there any redeeming true crime story? I mean, there's... Like one that's... You know, better than the Mad Chopper. That that any that, of them that that you would shelve if you had to. Oh, well, I would pretty much shelve any of them. Now, you know, you've dragged me in here and put me on the spot about this, so I have to kind of look back and see well, what didn't you true read crime. I'll be gone in the dark. I did, and I I was thinking about that, and I, I really did like that one a whole lot. It was it was super spooky. It I have to be super really scary. yeah. Super can scary. you start reading that like at a uh, Girl uh, Scout camp? Yes. Which was a poor and, decision. And I had to put it up. Yeah, it was not good. <laughs> no, Sorry. Uh, the most recent one I read was related to the um, true crime fest that we had. So the Phantom Killer, mm-hmm. that was that was interesting. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon. We did the Young Readers yeah. edition of that, which the kids really liked. Which for we are doing book for club. our book club. Oh, oh heavens! Gosh, it is so yeah. interesting and so good, and so I had no idea about all maddening. of that. Yeah, and it's very much like not only is it like true crime, but it it's kind of really feels like a, a history book yeah, too so you get a lot historical. of historical information yeah. um as well so that's really great i was trying to th- what are some of the others i know we sometimes Did you read, read snake eyes yes mm-hmm. yes i read snake eyes liked that um that was another one i read last year helter skelter was helter skelter i think we've read um mm-hmm. kind of sometimes a, we'll read okay. things as a group we didn't mention karen, karen and i uh, went down our list of top five we did not mention widow's, widow's web, web. Yeah. widow's web that yes. was a memorable one yeah yes. that was that was pretty awful mm-hmm. um well, it was a great book but oh yeah awful. yeah not and, the and awful story, story. Yes. was awful yes. absolutely the, the book was great um and so so interesting to read about places in little rock some of some of which are still there and yeah. some of which are are no longer there um yeah so i have to be really um intentional about my true crime reading because i get so spooked and if i read too many too close together, then I'm paranoid that someone's out to murder me, you know, every day, all that's, the time. That's what another one of our employees uh, watches a lot of ID discovery. Yeah. And she thinks somebody's going to get yes. her. Yes. Yeah. So that's a thing um, that I have to, I have to, you know, read like cozy mysteries and mm-hmm. um, things without murder entirely just to. An you know. antidote. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Is there anything else you'd like to know? No, Tiffany, you have been the 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 consummate guest. <laughs> you have been so ladylike. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. well, thanks and um, thanks for bringing up that trauma for me. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, it's time for our weekly trivia contest on Library Beat. Uh, each week, we come up with a challenging trivia question, and what we would like you to do, if you have the correct answer, please email. Uh, us at uh, gcl at gclibrary.com. That's the library's email address. Put in the subject line, Library Beat, uh, with the correct answer. And the first correct answer that we get is going to win a fabulous prize. Karen, what's our fabulous prize? Greg, it is a swag bag full of GC Library swag. That is very exciting. All right, so if you know the answer to this, please email us in your answer, and you might be the lucky winner. We're looking for the name of the Academy Award winning actress whose son uh, in Arkansas in 1987 murdered his wife and two daughters before taking his own life. So if you would please, uh, an infamous Arkansas crime that, as far as we know, has not had a book written about it. So it would make a very interesting book. It would make a great book. It would make an excellent book. So we're looking for the name of the actress who won an Academy Award, whose son lived in Little Rock in the 1980s, and unfortunately he murdered his family in in 1987. So please uh, send us in your answers. You might win the fabulous swag bag. Karen, is there anything else about true crime that we need to cover today? 
I think we've covered it all with true crime. I think so. We hope we'll see some of you on uh, April 1st for our discussion of Killers of the Flower Moon. Thank you very much. And thanks to our guests, Linda, Amy, Bill, Michelle, Aubrey, and Tiffany. (laughs) 